Um, I'm going to talk about things I loved about the film, things I liked about the film, and things I disliked. Um, first thing that I loved about the role was Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, I think he did a great job embodying that quiet rage, that warrior poet, poet aesthetic that was in the 1989 version with Patrick Swayze. Um, I think he approached this role with a lot of grit. Um, he definitely got in shape for it. And um, he was very convincing in a lot of the fight scenes. Um, I think Jake Gyllenhaal, he's the type of actor. He reminds me of uh, Ryan Gosling in Drive, how he's very like stoic, very calm, but there's like an, a little... <laughs> A little splash of like insanity, a little splash of rage that's just bubbling at the surface. And, you know, considering that his backstory, him being a former MMA fighter, him being a, he, my, my, minor spoilers, he, he killed someone in the ring and he's wearing that on his sleeve. He, he's trying to check himself and keep himself not only sane, but as calm and not reactive as possible i'm trying to he's trying to take the higher road and i think he did a really great job in embodying that role like while he's talking to a lot of the gang members and thugs before he fights them you know saying hey do you have insurance <laughs> hey um, how far is the nearest hospital because i want to make sure that you're okay before i beat your ass um which was really great um that was nice nice I, 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 a nice portrayal a, a, a nice addition to this version where you know he's embodying the patrick swayze you know, no matter what happens, always be nice. That's what Patrick Swayze, um, his creed, his mantra was to a lot of the junior bouncers um, in the 1989 version. He's like, no matter what happens, be nice. If they want to fight, escort them out, but be nice. You know, be nice up until the point you have to be not nice, you know? And I like that mantra in the 1989 version. I think that Jake Gyllenhaal embodied that mantra throughout the film. Um, what I liked... Um, I like the fight scenes. Um, this movie was directed by Doug Lyman. He also did The Edge of Tomorrow. He did uh, The Bourne Identity. And I know he caught some flack um, for, you know, establishing the shaky cam and stuff like that. And I know he's not the only one that, like, established that, but I know he's one that made it popular um, in the fight scenes. And I felt in this movie in particular, um, it was kind of ramped down. That shaky cam this was ramped down a little bit. Um, and they were very clean. The scenes were very clean. I've heard that they use CGI with some of the fight scenes to establish the connection with some of the shots and the blood and stuff like that and gore. Um, I didn't really have a problem when I was watching the film with any of that. Um, I felt I was fully engaged when I was seeing the fight scenes is what I'm trying to say. Um, I liked Conor McGregor. I liked, I felt that he was <laughs> out of all the characters in the movie. He was definitely the most memorable. And I think that was intentional. I think because of Jake playing Dalton with a nice stoic Stillwater's quiet storm approach portrayal to the Dalton character, um, he needed some fire. He needed a tempest. He needed someone to shake him out, like, you know, a, 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 a joker to his Batman, so to speak. And um, I think Conor McGregor succeeded in that. And I think that was the nature of the film, to be campy, to be to everyone to have fun, to engage in these roles, not so seriously, but serious enough to make them passable. And I think every actor in the film did a, a, a serviceable job. Some did more better than others, but I think the roles portrayed by the cast did a, a wonderful job with that. Um, some of the things that I disliked about the film, um, I felt that, I guess the story, well, not the story, the pacing and some of the portrayals of the characters were not as strong, not as streamlined. And some of the plot and scenes kind of went on longer than they should. And I'll give a I'll give us a breakdown for some of the characters. Um, the role of the big bad, um, I believe his name was uh, Ben Brandt in the movie. I can't remember his name. I'll, 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 I'll put in text. Um, I thought that he was very unmemorable. I think that his role in the film was to be sort of mustache, mustache twirling, you know, antagonist to Jake Gyllenhaal's protagonist. But I felt his impact on the film didn't really come across as, as memorable. And I know there was callbacks to 
1989 version uh, of the same character, so, so to speak. Um, but I, I just felt that the 1989 version was a little bit more memorable than this version. And I think that in large part to Conor McGregor's role and his portrayal that he kind of overshadowed a lot of the villainy in this film. Um, I was kind of waiting for Conor to get back. You know, even though he was hamming, hamming it up, he was memorable. And, and I think that's what matters. Like, no, it doesn't matter not necessarily like how long you're in that role. It just matters your impact. And if people remember, they'd be able to remember you. And I didn't remember the villains other than Connor in this film. So that some of the pacing was a little bit off. Um, this movie, the 2020 version was, I think seven minutes longer than the 1989 version. Um, I believe the budget of this film was, uh, 85 million compared to the, 16 15 million ver dollar version of the 1989 version so i felt a lot of that money came in for some of the special effects the cgi and i think they padded this movie or stretched it a little further than it would have need to be i don't think this should have been as long as it sh could ha should have and i could i believe they could have like trimmed it down to get more to the point um and case in point i talked to mainly the boat scene which had this kind of weird, it reminded me a little combination of the movie Tenet um, and that boat scene compared to the Quantum of Solace, that boat ride chase scene. And then it got really wacky and, and slapstick towards the tail end of that scene. But I felt that boat scene probably could have been chopped off because it, it just it had a weird type of energy. It was, it was brutal, but not brutal. It was slapstick but not slapstick it was you know it was long when it could have been shorter um everything leading up to it too was kind of like out of place that i felt i felt um i really wish this movie came out in theaters um i saw somewhere online where um the studios gave uh the filmmakers and producers an option if they gave them like 65 million and they can release in theaters or 85 million you know, go straight to streaming. I believe the filmmakers decided on the higher budget. And um, I understand that. Like, you know, you got to protect your bag. You got to, you know, fight for what you want. But I feel if this movie could have been made for a lot lower and maybe been seen by a lot more people who may not have Amazon Prime um, and the, the, the time limit and the pacing of the film and some of the story beats could have been written a lot more streamlined, a lot more optimized. I felt it could have been a better movie. Um, but I felt the movie that we got was definitely a nice, campy, fun movie. I definitely recommend it. I definitely enjoyed seeing it. Um, and I, I felt that all the actors that were in the 2024 version did a great job. I just wish that some of the things could have been tightened up a little bit. Um, and I'm glad Jake um, Gyllenhaal was signed up for this movie. Um, you can tell he gave a, a, a lot of himself to his role, and I really appreciate it. All right. Um, that's pretty much all I got. If you like this video, give it a like, share, subscribe. I really appreciate it. And you guys have a good one. Cab out.